care women were politically active from about 1840, we have evidence that they were involved in collecting money to repeal the Act of Union. And then we know about their involvement in Care Ladies Land League. But in from 1914, care women became involved with Common the Man, which was a women's paramilitary organisation to advance the cause for Irish liberty. And their aim was to assist and equip a body of Irish men for the defence of Ireland. So their involvement spanned the War of Independence and the Civil War. So if you we take one care woman, Alice Butler, as an example of how involved women were during this period, Alice joined in 1916 and she said that her home was used for weekly IRA battalion meetings from 1917 onwards. And for 12 months before the truce, her house was beset by tens. At one stage, all male members of her family were arrested. So you can imagine the tension in which they lived. Dan Breen verified this. He said every senior officer in the IRA used that house from time to time. So obviously there was a lot of catering. So as well as taking care of columns on their own, her house was a dispatch centre and she took dispatches two or three times a week, usually using a horse and, a horse and cart. And they transported arms for up to 12 miles away. So this was very dangerous work. She moved arms from Rose Green, Balalubi, Arlo, and she and transported Jelignite from Rose Green to Balalubi. On at least six occasions, Alice drove armed members of the local IRA. So Alice, as part of the train, her training would have attended first aid classes in care. And this came in handy because she was called often to dress wounds for members of columns. And at one stage looked after a soldier in the mountains for a two week period after he had contracted pneumonia. So Alice and her common Naman um, colleagues um, were involved in ambushes in that they were the backup. They brought foodstuffs to outposts. She came equipped with first aid supplies hid in a house in a distance from where they would attack and then would get away as quickly as possible when the column moved on. As well as that dangerous work, she also did intelligence work and that was keeping an eye on military activity. She built up friendly sources, as she put them, and often went into care and to see what information she could bring back to the columns. She then got a job as a barmaid in the military barracks, opposite the military barracks, so that she could gather information on troop movements and on raids. And I mean, this was so successful that Sean Hogan and Dan Breen both claimed that she saved their lives because she got information about a raid. And they they get, they said that this was about to happen in Kilbenny and they, she was she had informed them. So um, as well as all of that, she did the ordinary work of coming the man women. She did collections. She organized raffles and fundraising dances to support men in prison. During the Civil War, during the Civil War, she claims that the IRA columns now lived with us and as many as 40 men occupied their house at any one time. Um, so Alice's involvement was huge during this time and must have come at a, it, it was very dangerous work. She summed it up by saying that she helped the active service unit, was never absent, obeyed all orders, collected funds, organised work and dispatches in grave personal danger. She kept in touch with the columns and cared for men on the run. So we salute women like Alice Butler and their commitment to um, the, the flying columns of the War of Independence and then they still continued to help for the Civil War.